Today, we're gonna to talk about what wakes you up in the morning. Coffee, what does that word mean to you? No matter what you're doing, if you're going to work, if you're going skiing, if you're farming fields, if you're juggling knives, coffee. Coffee is the answer. Loosen your waist belts, because we are here to eat. Kabu cooking. It's what's for dinner. Kabu Food Network. Um, anything else? This is an eating show. The history of coffee dates from 850 AD in the kingdom of Sheba. It was brought to the attention of people from a goat herder who had witnessed his goats eating a small berry and then being tremendously energized. I think we can all relate to those goats. Problem is, there is a lot of different ways to make coffee. There's a lot of different types of coffee. There's light roast, there's dark roast, there's medium roast, there's cinnamon, there's Viennese, there's full city. What, what the f is full city? We got Bialetti's, coffee syringes, Chemex, espresso machines. We got cold brew, drip coffee. We got cowboy coffee, sugar, there's cream, oat milk, there's goat milk. What is it that I need to do to make a good cup of coffee? To get a little professional help, we're gonna check out Ralph Backstrom at Pacific Crest Coffee. Well, for us at Pacific Crest Coffee Company, it's always been about consistency, finding what tastes good, and then replicating it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ralph, you wanna uh, walk me through making a, a perfect shot? Absolutely. It all starts with the well-roasted coffee. Uh, we prefer to wait about four to seven days after roast in order to let some of the gases that are created during the roasting process to escape from the seed. This keeps us from having a whole cup of crema. Grab a clean cup, heat it up a little bit so we're not gonna flash freeze the shot. This is a gauged tamper, so when the spring is bottomed out, we don't need to push anymore. A few seconds for the liquid to start to saturate the espresso puck. Ideally, we don't see too many bubbles or too much blonding. We had 18 and a half grams of espresso grounds. That shot pulled at about 34 seconds, and now we have 35.2 milliliters of espresso. Mm, yeah, it's good, it's good. Maybe you remember the Aerobi Frisbees? Same individual, Alan Adler, invented this contraption called the AeroPress. Uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of ways to use this thing, but this method is called the inverted method. Set it up like so, add our ground coffee. It's gonna be Ethiopia, light to medium. Then we're gonna add our temperature controlled water at about 200 degrees. I remember last time with the AeroPress, I think I did around 20 grams. So if they could grind ahead of time, pre-grind and then come out and be like, okay, it's three fingers or two fingers, you could probably achieve some level of consistency. Yeah. Right. Oh, there we, there go. we go. Yeah, about two fingers. I'm gonna add a very small amount of hot water here. This is called the bloom. This kind of activates the grounds and helps get some of those uh, volatile gases out of the grounds. And this is also a very aromatic part of the coffee brewing process. Normally, we let that sit for about 30 seconds. And yeah, right to the top. And the benefit of doing it in the inverted method is that none of your brew is dripping into your cup before it's extracted. Maybe a little stir to sink some of the grounds that are on top. And in your adventure days, can you remember a particular time that coffee played a really big impact in your day? There were a lot of trips actually that we ended up with really, really, really bad conditions. Mm -hmm. And having some of my home roasted coffee was a really nice luxury to have. Mm -hmm. it, it was a lot of weight carrying a few bags of coffee beans. Did other athletes make fun of you? Yeah. Even when you were sipping your coffee in yeah. front of them? Yeah, I had one say, I mean, I don't know, the from Starbucks is just the same thing. Um, I disagree. <laughs> All right, and we've waited about a minute and 45 seconds. And now we're gonna flip this onto our cup and then a pretty gentle plunge. And then some people say that is at the end of the plunge, when you start to hear the air bubbles happening, you should stop plunging. You wanna get just the right amount of flavor extraction. If you, get, if you don't get enough, your coffee's gonna taste weak. It can taste a little bit sour 
or you can get what's called an over extraction and that is bitter flavors. That was delicious. This is what I use when I go camping and okay. I just bring a thermos. How many people would you, are you typically sharing a pour over with? And so it's like two to three people. Okay. You want to bloom for about 30 seconds. This is a great way to tell that the coffee is fresh. There are bubbles happening as the grounds get saturated with water. This water is 200 degrees. Three pours after the bloom. After the bloom. And now we can give it a little stir. Just gentle. They call me old ham bone hands grease because I, I can break a filter. Do you want to give this one a try? Go for it. Yeah. See what you think. Sometimes it takes a little bit for it to open, o open up after up. it's yeah, yeah. brewed, but so far it tastes, I don't know, acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back from Ralph Backstrom's shop, and I think I have a starting place for how to make a better cup of coffee. Uh, first thing, wet the filter, just so it stays in place. We are going to weigh some beans. I'm going to try to get to 26 grams. If you don't have a scale, just use a scoop and start with one scoop, then go to two scoops uh, until you get to the flavor that you want. Grind it up. There's just one bean in there going round and round. And then the bloom, this releases the aromatic flavors. Once you've done that, you're supposed to pour in a circular manner. I think the take home message is get a procedure and then fine tune your process, no matter what it is, whether you have a grind or you don't, uh, until you get the taste that you want. That's it. A good cup of coffee will get you fired up to do the daily tasks that lie ahead. For me, taking down my Christmas lights in February. <laughs>